What will our grandkids eat? What sort of world are we making for our grandkids and their grandkids? What are the big problems? Who takes the decisions on how we resolve them? And what action do they need to take? Even now, things are not looking that good. We have the current pandemic and who knows what is to come. There are the bushfires, floods and droughts, all part of climate change. Pollution and toxic chemicals are damaging our health. And in many countries, we have autocratic rulers maltreating the ordinary folk. What will be the biggest problem our grandkids will face? And who will take the decisions? It need not be energy shortage. There's enough energy falling on the earth in one hour to meet the entire energy needs of humanity for a year. We know how to fix climate change. And we have, right now, the technology to harness it. We're just a bit light in the commitment department. Who will take these decisions? Will it be our governments with their bureaucracies and armies? Will it be the tycoons who run the global corporations? Or will it be the billionaires taking joyrides to outer space? None of these. The biggest problem we will face is what to eat. And we, the people, will take that decision. We decide what food we grow or buy and put into our mouths. We are mining our food, slowly destroying our soils, and we have now run out of further land to exploit. The future of our species depends on whether we can learn to recycle our food. And who are the best recyclers? The worms, or rather the biology inside the worms. This is what regenerates the soil to provide us with ongoing food and the, the biology enters the plants we eat which provides us with the immune system to fight off this or the next pandemic. They store the carbon in the soil rather than pollute the atmosphere. We kill them off by our giant machines and toxic chemicals. We are destroying our grandkids futures and we can't blame anyone else but us. Anyone who thinks we can survive on plastic food made in factories is living in cloud cuckoo land. We need real food grown in real living soil with active beneficial biology and the minerals our bodies need. We decide what we eat and what we do with our waste food and organics, directly or indirectly. In the body of this video, I will explain the technology so we can recycle our food for as long as we can see into the future. And at the very end, I'll give the punchline of what we need to do now to protect the future of our grandkids. The Delta virus has changed the rule book. Around the world, not just in Sydney, it is running rampant, causing havoc and disruption of carefully laid plans. It is an emergency and we just have to look at the facts as we know them, fill in the holes where we have no facts, plan and above all, act. The facts are that most people who die from COVID are either suffering from stress, which we know leads to the release of cortisol, which shuts down the immune system, or they have been on a poor diet, which we know leads to a compromised immune system. The obvious aim is to enhance the community's immune system. This will not stop people from catching the virus and it will not cure them of the virus but if we can act before people catch the virus it could be the difference between dying and not dying. That is a very big difference. It really is not a major catastrophe if people get sick for a few weeks and recover but it is if there are significant deaths. So if we can stop people from dying when they catch the virus we have dramatically changed events. That must clearly be our aim. How do we do that? By vaccination, but also by enhancing the immune systems. Vaccines do not kill the virus. They train our immune system, and then our immune system kills the virus. We know that the bulk of our immune system lives in our guts, and our gut has trillions of cells which communicate with each other to provide an intelligent control system, which is a major input to our immune system. 
we have no idea how this intelligent control system, our gut brain, actually works. But we do know that it does. But we have some ideas of the basic mechanic. Birth is a critical period when we get much of our mother's gut biology and then more biology from her breast milk. After that, it comes from what we eat. Plants are full of biology, which comes from the soil and the animals that live in the soil, of which earthworms are the most important. This all depends on the conditions in the soil, temperature, available food and moisture level. If these are right, then the conditions are right for us to have the beneficial biology that will lead to an enhanced gut and immune system. That is the basic concept of the G-Biota bed, which were initially developed so farmers can supply their local community with food to enhance their gut. It's still our long-term plan, but the Delta virus changes the rule. What we need now, and quickly, is a bed that anyone, including people living in an apartment, can grow some of their food, G-Biota food, at home to fight off the Delta strain. This is why I developed the lockdown G biota bed, so people can have a dead simple bed that can grow G biota food at home. This is what they look like in action. Simply a standard tote box, which can be bought for a few dollars from the local bargain store. The plants growing in the box are pruned back in a process called tipping, where the tips of the leaves are pruned back leaving the older mature leaves to power the plant for the next bunch of tips. These can be simply eaten raw, made into a smoothie, which is what I do, or put into a sandwich or wrap, just added to a regular meal. Making the g -Biota lockdown bed is simple. First you need the basic box. I paid $6.50 for these, but basically any watertight box will do. You may need several boxes as a guide one box per person in the household. The bed must have an outlet, preferably with a swivel to control the water level. The easiest way of cutting the hole is to heat up a bit of pipe of the required diameter. I use a bit from my socket set. Then fit a standard 18mm connector with a rubber grommet. I suggest you connect this to a 90 degree elbow using a piece of soft pipe. This makes it easy to clean if needed. You can rotate to point upwards when filling or down when draining. The commercial size beds, which may be up to 20 metres long, must have an ag pipe running the length of the bed. They have a saw dam which raises the pipe, so when the bed is watered, the base is flooded to the height of the saw dam, when the water slowly drains out back to a sump to create the partial flood and drain system, which is essential to get the Goldilocks moisture level, not too wet and not too dry. This uses a pump and timer, so the system is totally automated. The lockdown bed is made as simple as possible for home use, so watering has to be done manually. As people are in lockdown, this is not an issue. I've made them both with and without the zag pipe. Both work, but the pipe has advantages. If you are not using that pipe, you simply twist the drain pipe to point upwards. Apply just sufficient water that you can see it in the viewing pipe, then twist it to point downwards to let the water drain out. You need a container to catch this water and it will be full of nutrients and biology, which you'll use on the next watering. If you want to use an ag pipe, which I recommend, but is not essential, you lay the pipe over a spacer. A bit of 25mm pipe works fine and fit the pipe around the outlet. Then just fill around the outlet with soil to make the leaky dam. So when watering, it automatically floods the base of the bed. Then the water slowly leaks out through the dam on the partial flood and drain principle. Next job is to make the water inlet. Commercial beds use a basket, which is filled with organic matter. So the water has to flow through the decomposing waste, making the compost tea, which is a critical part of the G-Biota bed process. When the waste has decomposed, it is simply emptied over the bed as a surface mulch and to top out the soil level. On the lockdown bed, you can simply make a compost pipe manually by just digging a hole and filling with waste. Or you can use a smaller compost bin with holes. Even a flower pot with extra holes on the side will work fine. 
Some people like to fill this up with food waste each day and just put a lid on top, but this wastes space and may make smells if the box is inside. This works fine, but I prefer to use a compost bill filled with waste then covered with soil so I can use the whole area of the bed. When it comes time to empty the bin, I can simply pull it out of the soil and spread the nicely decomposed compost as a mulch on the surface of the bed. You can now partially fill the bed with organic waste, which you can collect from the kitchen. I recommend adding some organic manure to the organic waste. Decomposition takes a lot of nitrogen out of the soil. I'll add about a litre in a normal sized tote box, which holds about 50 litres in total. It is essential to have worms to break down this waste and to make the worm casting or vermicast, which is an essential part of the process. Next job is to create the layer where the roots will grow. Vermicast or worm castings complete with worm eggs is the ideal material and worms are really essential for the G-Biota process. When you have been running a G-Biota bed you will be making your own vermicast and breeding your own worms but you may need to buy a starter kit. Just go to my web or email me for details on where you can buy these. Make sure the entire bed is really moist for wolf seeding as this helps germination. We are growing baby greens so we need to select the plants that you most like. Spinach, linseed, alfalfa, sprouting broccoli, radish, beetroot makes excellent baby greens. You can sow much denser than normal as you will be tipping all the time until the plants become old and the leaves start to go tough and bitter when they are pulled up and used as organic waste. You then need to cover the seeds with biomin at the rate of about half a litre per box. This contains the essential minerals and biology needed for a healthy gut and immune system. Pat down to ensure close contact with the seeds, then water very gently so the seeds are not washed away. In hot weather I may cover the entire box with a piece of old cloth or a fertiliser bag to keep the germination layer moist without getting too wet. Baby greens need to be watered on a regular basis. Commercial g beds will have a system of pumps and timers so the process is automated and so may irrigate several times a day. But lockdown beds are purely manual. During germination the top layer must be kept moist which will mean watering the entire surface once a day. Once they have put down roots it is fine for the very top layer to dry out so you can water through the compost tube. After about two or three weeks it is time to start harvesting using the tipping method. Just the very tips of the plants are harvested leaving mother leaves behind which will power the plant. The young tips will be fresh and will be free of any insect attack. The mother leaves may get eaten by insects but that does not matter really as they will end up in the composting process. Avoid any temptation to use toxic chemicals. They may say on the bottle that they are safe for humans and that may well be true but we are growing gut biology which will be killed by insecticide. That is what they were developed for. The surface layer will drop as the worms consume the waste so there needs to be a way of topping the bed up. It is not good to simply add more waste to the surface of the bed. The plants need real soil to grow in or preferably the vermicast which is the top of the range soil. Burying organic waste to blow the root level and letting the worms consume it is the best way of reprocessing waste. However it is not good to be digging out the bed anytime that the top up is needed. When the waste in the compost tube has been fully converted into vermicast the bin or the hole can be taken out and spread on the surface as mulch. Anyone who watches the news cannot help feeling a little bit depressed. It starts with a number of new Covid cases and deaths. Then there are the fires and floods from some part of the world, followed by some autocratic ruler maltreating the ordinary folk. This is the Anthropocene we now live in, where humans have the technology to damage the planet on which we all depend. This requires a shift in thinking about what life is all about. 
changing from economic growth and maximising profits for a few to benefiting the community as a whole. We may think that atomic war, some pandemic or food shortages will be the threats to humanity, when the biggest threat is the damage we can cause to the microscopic life which makes the soil which keeps us healthy. This is what the GBIOTA project is all about, having a food system which produces the food we evolved to eat. I cannot change the world's food system myself. What I can do is support the people who can create the awareness of the need for change so all people can have access to food which will make them healthy at a price they can afford. However, it is just a fact of modern life that we live in an era of manipulation of information. My support is therefore based on the creative common systems. The information may be copied and reproduced, but the source of the information, that's me, must be acknowledged, so anyone can cross-check the information. Non-commercial users can use the information free of charge, but to ensure that any products claiming to be GBIOTA, commercial users must obtain permission and demonstrate that their products conform to the GBIOTA methods. It may seem a small step, but please read my web and tell your friends and ask them to tell their friends so we can create a world fit for our grandchildren and their grandchildren to live in. The punchline. There are just three simple steps we need to make to ensure our grandkids have real food to eat. First step is to make people aware of the need to recycle and grow real food. Unfortunately, we live in the area of manipulation of the truth with massive advertising budgets to sell plastic food. We cannot compete against this, so we have to do it the old fashioned way by people, yes, that's you, telling your friends about the importance of real food and persuading them to tell their friends. Secondly, we have to persuade growers of the need to recycle. That is easy. Every grower I know is concerned about the future of their soil. We just need the power of the wallet. We need to let them know that if they adopt regenerative agriculture and the g systems, we will buy from them. We need to encourage the growers and make sure that they have a viable long-term business. Maybe you can become a g grower. Thirdly, we need to make it easily to recycle our waste food. The easiest way is by people having their own g beds so they can recycle directly. And we will need people to set up local businesses making and setting up g boxes to make it easy for people who don't have the time or the expertise. If you think becoming a g grower or builder could be your scene, just contact me through my web, gbiota.com. Then there is a fourth, which I did not tell you about. There are some people who are just interested in short-term profits and they will never change, but they will eventually die off and be replaced by a new generation. There are other people who are already totally convinced of the need to recycle our food and are already doing it, but there are a vast bulk of people in the middle who think that there is some magic they who will fix all our problems. Well, the magic they simply does not exist. We need to persuade them that if they want their grandkids to have a future, they need to act.